everybody. Uh, I'm very happy that you are here. And I'm here. So today I would like to tell you something about calling to you by anti magic labeling. So during my talk, I will introduce the local anti magic labeling, the story uh, for the calling, and then at the end, I will present several variations of, of this problem. So we already solve this problem, we know how to do it. So consider that we have a car and our goal is to assign numbers, different numbers from one up to number of A to this graph such that the rates of all vertices are all these. So we know about it. Yes, this such labeling, such time and it's called anti-magic labeling. And we know how to do it. Yes, so this is the example that we already saw. So just let me recall this graph has eight edges. So we use numbers from one up to A, and we distribute the number such, for example, in this way, that the weights of all vertices are this. <laughs> this is the concept of anti And now we will ask that question. So now we consider this problem. The beginning will be the same. Again, we don't have graph, we will send this number to this graph. But now we do not require that all edges have distinct weights. We have some relaxing condition. We require just the uh, edges, edges, uh, edges and vertices of the distinct weights. Okay. So here we have a graph and how to find it. I hope that it is interesting to see that previous labeling that is property. All vertices have a uh, distinct space, then also adjacent vertices have distinct space. Okay, but uh, we would like to. Uh, uh, our question is whether we can do it in another way, whether we can attach uh, Simon that some of your ways of vertices will be the same, but only for uh, vertices that are not adjacent. Okay. So this leads to the concept of uh, local anti magic labeling. So let me start this summary. Which, so at the beginning, in anti magic labeling, all vertices have distinct weights. In local anti magic labeling, uh, we require that just adjacent vertices and distinct Evidently, every anti magic graph is local. Okay, so this is anti magic labeling of this graph, but it is also local anti magic labeling. Of course, we can find another labeling, for example, this one. Again, we assign numbers to the edges of this graph, so we assign numbers from up one up to a, and now we check the weights. So we see that two vertices have weight 11, so, so just when we recall that the weight of the vertex is the sum of the labels. Of uh, uh, incident edges. So, like for this part 11, it's just from 7, but 1 plus 3. So, we see that two vertices have the same rate, 11, but it is not a problem because uh, these vertices are not edges. Okay? So, we have a concept of local anti magic cycling. It is a definition. So, we assign numbers from one to the number of edges to the graph, and we require that the base of adjacent vertices are listed. This concept is quite new. It was uh, independently in 2017, two groups of people uh, defined this form. Okay. Uh, group around Professor Aramugam, he uh, conjectured that every connected graph other than K2 is what I want. Trivially, again, K2 is exception. Then we have only one possibility to assign uh, number to the edge, it's one, and both, and that is the very one. Uh, ben Smile and these co authors, they conjecture stronger, something stronger. So uh, they conjecture that every graph is not conformant isomorphic to isomorphic edge as local arm. So we have this concept. And the uh, one is later than was published a paper uh, by Housegrave and the proof that the conjecture for any graph, not just for the general conjecture, was true 
Okay, so you prove that every graph is a pixel for two is local average. And now we can ask, what do we have? Everything is done. But problem solved for you can solve this area and try to do something else. But look at this problem from a different point of view. So if we have a local anti magic light solution, then we can get corresponding vertex coloring, which will be proper vertex coloring, such that every the wave of every vertex will be um uh, will be the color of the vertex of the vertex. Okay, so here we have uh local anti-magic labeling, and we see that we have two vertices with wave 11, let's say this color will be pink. Then we have a color 19, and for you see it more like to, to have a nicer color picture, it's a color uh yellow, then we have color 17, and then we have color 14. So let me recall proper vertex coloring is a setting of uh, colors, numbers, the vertices of the graph, such as the uh, the vertices that are adjacent, they have this. Okay. And this leads to the concept of local anthropogenic chromatic number because what we can ask, we can ask what is the minimum number of colors taken over all such coloring okay, induced by local anthropogenic light. So we would like to get the minimum number of colors, okay, in other words, the minimum number of waves that are corresponding to the local anthropogenic color. So here we have that here local anthropogenic chromatic number of this graph is most four. Yeah, because we have a contraction for a graph, we can we can find such a yeah, so now we will try to find a local anthropogenic chromatic number of so we will discuss some bounds of this pattern. So let's start with some trivial bounds. As every graph it's a K2, it's local anthropology, so this parameter is well defined because we can find local anthropology. Right? So we can find for any graph, it's a K2, we can find such a local anthropology. So let's think about the upper bound. So trivial upper bound number of vertices. Every vertex is the color. We know that such a label can see, so we can speak a lot. What about the, low, the lower? So the trivial lower bound for local anthropogenic chromatic number is the chromatic number of the graph. So let me recall the definition of chromatic number of the graph. So if we have a graph, then vertex k coloring of the graph is a assignment of uh, say C that assigns numbers from one up to K to the vertex of the graph, and we say that this uh, coloring is uh, proper. Adjacent vertices have different colors. <laughs> and in such a case, we say that the graph is K color. It has uh, proper uh, K color. Okay. And here we have the definition of chromatic number. So, chromatic number uh, chi G, G is the least case such that there exists a proper K color in G. So, this means that graph is K color. So this is a trivial lower bound. So let's check what we have. One interesting situation is that the difference between the local anthropogenic chromatic number and chromatic number of the graph can be arbitrary large. How we can see? So it was proved that if you have a T, if you have a tree with LLDs, then Local anthropogenic chromatic number of this graph is at least number of least least one one. It is possible to extend this result also for any graphs with all these. And we have that the local anthropogenic chromatic number of a graph with L is at least L one one. So let me explain why it is like that. So consider that we have a graph G and we have LLEs. So 
So we have to assign these things numbers to the edges of this graph. Say this will mean this is uh, so this will be uh, number uh, a one, a two, a three, and so on. And the last we will have uh, labeled a uh, trivially all of these vertices have this thing squares. Okay, and when a l is the largest number used for labeling the vertices, then this. The label of the the weight of this vertex is greater than a r. Yeah. So we have l plus one. Uh, at least l plus one. This thing vertex means that the lower bound for the local energy chromatic number is least the one. Yeah. We will discuss some simple graphs. Okay, so let's think what is the local antimagy chromatic? Yeah, this is for a graph. Yeah. 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 What? What? Yeah. No, 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 so you have a data. In general, you have the lower bound for local antimagy chromatic number is chromatic number. Okay. So trivially, if we have no leaves, then local antimagic chromatic number will be at least one. Yeah. Of course, for some graphs, you will get greater lower bound or some upper bound uh, using different uh, conditions. Okay. So let's discuss local antimagic chromatic number for some standard graphs. Mm -hmm. So we start with uh, paths. So what? Do you think it's a local antimagic chromatic number of a pass? Yes, we have a condition. Sorry? Two or three. Two or three. Two or three. So what do you think? Yes, it is at least three because we have a pass and it has two pendants. So it must be at least three. It is you're right. It's exactly three. So let me show how you can find such uh, how you can prove. So generally, we prove we have a lower bound that yeah, some using some argument, and then we have to prove that there exists such a level. So let me explain uh, how this uh, how we can construct the uh, labeling with required uh, properties. So would you like to try, it or would you like to have a minute? It's not complicated. You can try, or if you would like, I can show you the other things. So I don't know whether you would like to try. From your face, I see nothing. <laughs> okay, so maybe I will show you first and then you can try for the other examples. Okay, so what, how we can do it? So if we have a pass and how we like it? One, two, three, and then we will go back. Four, five, six. And it's a very simple way how to find the labeling. And we will check what are the ways or what are the colors. So very, very simple. Okay. Now, another question. What is the local automatic chromatic number of the cycle? So here you have a graph with no paradox. Yes. So Ah, you will see. So we have that there is a some opinion that it depends on very So you remember what is the lower bound for the the upper bound is number of values. But you, I, I hope that you you can see that it is and it will be not the exact value. So what is the lower bound? You remember what is the lower bound for any local antimatic chromatic number? Chromatic number of the graph. So now the question is. What is the chromatic number of the cycle? It's two or three, and this depends on very. You remember when it is two and when it is three, when the chromatic number of the cycle is two. When n is even, yes. when n is even, then local antimatic, uh, then the chromatic number of the cycle is two, but n is odd, it's two. So you know. And now, so we have a lower bound. 
for local anti chronotic number of cycle. My question is, is it possible to get the local anti chronotic number for a cycle? Surely we have to deal with this real cycles, but this is a problem at one yeah. but this is the case when it can happen with local anti chronotic number two. What do you think? You have a solution or you have an answer? No. So let me explain why. So consider that we have a cycle on even number of vertices. So say six, we have a cycle C six. So if local anti-magic chromatic number of cycle C six will be two, then the weights of these three vertices must be the same. Yes, so say this will be A. And how we get A? So say that the way the label of this edge will be, say it will be A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6. So what is three times A? A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 plus A6. Yeah. And now, say that the other vertices, they have color white, say it will be color, but what is B? How we can get B? Look the same, what is three times B? Here B is A2 plus A3. B is A4 plus A5. A6 plus A1 is also B. So this is B the same. That's a contradiction because then we have that A is the same as B. But it's not possible. It's because we do not allow that adjacent vertices have. Okay, so we have the lower bound for any order of sign out. And it's free. And it is exactly free. Okay, so we have a lower bound. And now we have to prove that this is exactly the other one. So, usually, how we do it, we construct such a unit. So, maybe you can try to do it for, for a cycle. Um, it's not complicated to do it, and I am sure that if you were making notes from my talk, you already have it in your summary. Okay, so how we can do it? Look, again, we will do it like that one, two, three, yeah, in one direction, and then we will go back four, five, six, and we will check the weights of the vertices, and we see that we have two uh, or Two vertices color is six, then three non adjacent vertices color is seven, and one uh, vertex color is color nine. You remember when where we had this label? What we constructed using a similar structure? What? You do not measure a Yes, we use the same construction. When we were constructing the uh, super magic labeling of uh, the bipartite <laughs> graph containing the Hamiltonian cycle, yeah, it's exactly the same construction. Yeah, so we have result for the first cycle. It's clear. Any question? Okay. Now, start. So, we have the question is what is local anti-magic chromatic number of a star? What? <laughs> and, yes, because we have it's exactly this one, yes, it's number of leaves plus one. Yes. What do you think? See, it's <laughs> are you able to find such a labeling? Up to isomorphism, you have no chance to do it in other way, yeah. One, two, three, four, and so on. Still, there's no chance to do it. Yeah. 
Okay, and now we have a last result that uh, local chromatic number of uh, uh, of a concrete graph on n vertices. Of course, we have to exclude the case when we have a k two. Okay, I want to catch. So then it is three. Uh, sorry, then it is a number of vertices. Uh, I do not have here example how you can find such a assignment, but you can try to do it alone. No, but after finishing the talk today, when you will be free and would like to find such a thing, it's, it's easy to find it. Just to, you, you just need to think it a little bit more. But it's, it's very nice and you will be able to do it. Okay, so you will be, you are interested in how to do it, you will not, like, after you know, trying several times, you will not know. Okay, so it's like homework assignment too. Okay. Okay, so now come back to the CRM. It is saying something about the lower bound of the local anthropogenic chromatic number of things. We know that we have we have a least a P is a least then the local anthropogenic chromatic number of this P is at least L plus one. And all results that are obtained for P's that they indicate. That the local anti magic chromatic number of three, of course, we have K2, uh, is either number of leaves plus one or number of leaves plus two. And it was conjectured by uh, Aramogam, Lincoln, Alata, and Van, and they conjecture that uh, for any three of, uh, other than K2, the local anti magic chromatic number is either L plus one or L plus two. Okay, so now I will show you one family of graphs how to contact such a okay, the first one. So I will show you the spiders. So what is a spider? Spider is a tree, special tree, with at most one vertex of degree greater than two. So we have only one vertex uh, with degree greater than two, and then all the other vertices are uh, of degree one or two. So, what is a spider? Pass is a spider, or star is a spider. Yeah, so how we can construct it? And here we have example. Yes, yeah, so this is spider. We use notation spider S11, one, one, uh, sorry, one, two, 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 three, five, five, seven. So, what does it mean? We have one central vertex and we attach here several passes. Okay, so we have what does it mean? We have a, one pass of length one, then three passes of length three, two, then one pass, three, and two, pa uh, two passes of length five, one pass. Seven. Okay. And now I will show you the way how to find such labeling. Okay. So, what was true? So, it was true when the length of the shortest pass is one. Then we can find labeling that uh, for which the corresponding local automatic chromatic number or induced chromatic number is L11. If L, uh, sorry, uh, N1, so the length of the shortest path is at least two, then it is either L plus one or L plus two. And it depends that, that there are some uh, um, conditions for, for the. For, for these parameters, yeah, but we can we can prove this. So let me show you how to find such uh, like okay, I will join. <laughs> you can try to do it alone, and then I will show you. Okay, so we have a few minutes time. So one pass and two passes. And three passes of one, two, one pass of one, three. 
then two point five. The last one. Okay, so first, how many edges we have in this graph? How many? Uh, I can do that. So we have one plus two plus two plus three, count all these numbers. So what is it? 27. We have 27 edges. So it means that we use numbers from one up to 27 to label the edges of this graph. And we will do it this way. So again, we need to find some nice algorithm. So I will divide the edges into two parts. So first, I will color the last edges from the past. Yeah. Then I will check. I will not color the second part, uh, the second um, uh, edge, but the third from the end, yes? So we do not have third edge, so we have this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, and then I will continue, then this edge. So I will color the every second uh, edge. And I will start to label these edges from the left side to the right side, and I will start with the largest numbers. So 27, 26, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 20. Now I continue with, again, with blue edges. So we have 20, so this will be 19. 18, 17, 16, and then continue. 15, 14, 13. And in opposite direction, we will, you, we will uh, now label the non labeled edges, but in increasing order. So we start by this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then we have to continue here, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, so this is the algorithm how we can do it. And now let's check what are the induced colors. Here we have color 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. And now check the colors of the second last vertex. So what we have here? 27. But it's okay because this uh, color is already here. 27. Yeah, so we fix the sum of the two edge labels to be constant. 27, 27, 27, 27. Okay, and now the other vertices, so that have from the end to distance three, this one, what do you have? 23. This is okay because 23 is already here. And now you can see that all of these vertices have also color 23. Yeah. And now we will continue. So next we have this vertex. So 18 plus 8 is 26. Okay. This color is already here on the pendant. 26. 26. Yeah. All of these vertices, all these vertices of 
from this, uh, of the same distance from the bottom, they have the same color. And we continue. 15 plus 8 is 23. And that's great because we already have this color. It's a new color. It's not new color. 23, 23. We are more, almost at the end. Here we have 13 plus 11 is 24. That's great because this color is already here. Then this one. 23 and it's, it's a point. So we have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors till now. And this will be the new color. Is it clear that this vertex will have this thing color than the other one? Of course, <laughs> because if this, this vertex is adjacent with the edge level by 27. Yeah. So this new color is surely greater than the frequency taken with that. Okay, so this is the algorithm how we can find the level of four. Now the next step is to describe the labeling to prove that you have the desired properties. Any questions to the time? Who's here where is that this one? Anyone is one? So it's not so clear where you can use. Again, it's just uh this is just example. So would you say that if you can yeah, if you don't have an edge like that, you you have to have sometimes for some cases, depending on how many vertices and edges you have, then if you fix vertices, then the number of edges is fixed. So about the distribution of numbers, some sometimes you can get that um like uh the but the, you can get L plus one uh, colors. But in general, what we can find, but there is L plus two, because we, these constructions, if you will use for the case when the, the length of the shortest pass is at least two, will produce uh, coloring with L plus two colors. Yeah. For some, using some other techniques for some special cases, you can prove also that it is L plus one. But using some, like, in other arguments, you can show that L plus one is for some cases not possible. So there, there are graphs that have the um, local analytic chromatic numbers. We are speaking about the L plus one. And some that they have local analytic chromatic number L plus two. Okay, so we have like two classes of trees. And a class here for so you have of two, yeah. You you will have uh, the if you will delete this one, and it will be sufficiently large, uh, long. So then you have to do it. Yeah. So if you have, for example, this one, this will be maybe something like some regular case, and you will have some sufficiently large number of these passes. So this will be very big compared to the others. Yeah. So if you will guarantee that the sum of these numbers will be greater than the number of edges here, then you have to have a plus two. So it's just using some simple argument you can you cannot make some things But in general this is still conjecture, yeah? So it's like, um, we have results that support this conjecture, also this part of graph, but maybe it could be nice to prove, maybe somebody from you can do that. Okay, any questions? Mm -hmm. Do you have a lot of address that's that most of this for this? Sorry? Like how much evidence you have for L plus two? How much what? Evidence that comes from all the results that we already been that we just have indicated this. And we have also some results for disconnected to us. And so it's the same. Yeah. But you know, for for general rules, some other different techniques might be. Okay, 
So now we will deal with some variations of uh, local anti-magic uh, number or local anti-magic number or local anti-magic uh, evaluations. Um, let me recall the definition of uh, uh, labeling of flame gas. So do you remember what is labeling of type ABC? <coughs> you have a flame gas, we label edges, vertices, and faces like that. Yeah. So the first A, the first number here in this people is for is either zero or one. When it is zero, what does it mean? <coughs> we do not label vertices. When there is one, we label vertices. Then on the second position, if there is one between three label vertices. If there is zero, we do not label the edges. And the last C, this coordinate is for the faces. So if we label faces, C equal to one. If we do not label faces, C is zero. <laughs> so we have um, labeling of type A, B, C. And we know also what is the way uh, face. Okay, so uh, it is a sum of the labels present uh, that are uh, on the elements and the boundary of the face and the boundaries. Okay, so here we have the example, just very quickly, we have a face, if we label on the uh, edges of the graph, then we see the label the edges. When we have labeling of okay, kind one one zero, so it means like we like the vertices edges, we do not like the faces, then the way of face is uh, the sum of the label vertices edges uh, on the boundary of this space. And here's one another example when we label everything, so we have to also add everything to get the way of the face. Okay. Um we didn't have time to speak about face anti labeling on previous talk, and time is limited. So, uh, trivially or evidently, we can define face anti labeling of type ABC. It's such a labeling that uh, the resulting face weights are all this. And a uh, local version of this face anti labeling uh, of type ABC. We require that just the uh, weights of adjacent faces are distinct. What does it mean that two faces are adjacent? Okay, so we say that two faces are adjacent when they share at least one edge. Okay, so is it clear? So here we have examples. We have labeling of type 110. Of this graph is Cartesian product of cycle C on six vertices with a puzzle for vertices. Um, so we label vertices and edges of this graph, we do not label faces. And now we will check what are the weights of faces. So here we have two types of faces um, four sided faces here, then we have one six sided face uh, inside and one unbounded six sided face here. Yeah. yeah. So don't forget on the uh, unbounded face, yeah? And we will check the weights of the face, for example, for this one, okay? So it is written here that there is 101. And how we get it? So it is 6 plus 19 plus 7 plus 18 plus 1 plus 25 plus 12 plus 10. Okay, and then we will do it for every edge, uh, every face, we can count such a way of the way of the face. We see that all faces have distinct weights. Okay. But maybe you can see that this labeling has some special problem. Check the weights of the voice four sided faces there 101, 103, then plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two. So the difference of the way uh, face weight for four sided faces. And they provide the receipt of the difference too. For six sided spaces, from the difference too. So you have uh, this is called, you can say, uh, one one uh, phase uh, anti magic, uh, A2 phase anti magic labeling of type one one zero. Yeah. But for us now, it is not interesting that they have given their some additional property. For us, it is important 
that adjacent faces have this object. Oh. And so let's have a look a little bit about these types of uh, local phase anti-magic evaluations. Because if we need to show that such labeling exists, because you, I think that you know what we are going to do. We are going to define the corresponding uh, local anti-magic chromatic number. So if you would like to show that uh, some properties of this parameter, you have to show that such labeling exists. So first time, very easy, labeling of type one, one, zero. So it means that we label what faces. Which numbers we use for labeling faces? One, two, three, up to the number of faces. What will be the weight of the face? The, the label itself, yes. So trivially, we have the such labeling yeah. is uh, it's just, you know, if you would like to connect it, it's just condition that you need somehow to uh, have it kind of, uh, have a nice way how to evaluate the weight or weight of the face. So that you um, count every edge just once. So it's just for this reason. Okay, so this is the real case. Okay, then labelings of tags one, zero, one, zero, one, one, and one, one, zero. So again, it is possible to prove that every two connected point graphs, we will, we will rest it only on two connected graphs, so I will skip this condition. Yeah, this local place anti magic of all of these three maps. Again, there are proofs how we can find such values. And now, when we would like to deal with the type. Zero, one, zero. First, we will define, or I will tell you what is the dual map of plane map. Okay, so dual map, consider that we have a map, the uh, Ruva, yeah? And what is the dual map, and denoted as style of this map? So it is the map of adjacent, adjacency of the faces M, where two faces are adjacent if they have a common boundary edge. So what we will do, we have the red uh, graph, yes, the red, uh, sorry, the, the blue graph, and here we have how many faces? So this is the first one, so we will put vertex here. Then we have this face, so we will put vertex here. We have here this triangle, we will put vertex here, and then we have one external face, so we don't have another vertex. And in the new, in the dual map, two vertices are uh, adjacent, if and only if the corresponding faces in the plane map and share one edge. Yeah, so for these vertices, there exists edge because this triangle, this triangle, they have one common edge. They, this vertex and this vertex, there is no. Uh, edge between these two vertices in the dual map because these triangles, this one, this one, they do not share. Okay, so it is easy how you can you can understand how we can construct the dual map. Okay, and then by duality, what we have, we know that every connected graph other than K two is local anti-magic. And by duality, we immediately get that any two connected frame graph other than cycle is local phase anti-magic of time uh, zero, one. So we get the results using duality. Okay. Uh, of course, we still have two cases, case zero, one, zero, zero, and case one, one, zero. And we do not have uh, like uh, results for general, or there, there are no not known results for general graphs. But we conjecture, we believe that also for uh, this type of labeling, we can find the 
the, these graphs are of these types uh, of anti-magicness if the graph is not a cycle. Okay, so now we have existence, we have yes, you need uh, after this lecture that such labeling exists. And now what we are doing, we are going to ask to find the minimum number of um, colors. The color will correspond to the weight of the faces such that the um, adjacent faces still have listing colors and we try to minimize the number of listing colors. Okay, so this is the concept of local face and chromatic number of type uh, A, B, C. So what we have, so some general bounds for local anthropometric chromatic number of type A, B, C. So the general lower bound for this graph invariant is chromatic number of the dual graph. Yeah. So we have this result. And it is at least good. So, and the, uh, the trivial upper bound if the labeling exists is of course the number of this. So let's talk a little bit about the result that we have. Okay, so evidently you know how to compare labeling for type zero, zero bound. We have to assign these numbers of faces. So every phase has to have this thing color. So we have the local anthropogenic chromatic number of type 0, zero 1 is equal to number of phases. Okay. Now, consider cycle. Yeah. Consider that we have a cycle on vertices and we ask what is the local anthropogenic chromatic number of cycle for different values of parameter A, B, and C. So uh, it's done. Uh, I, I, I'm showing you the results, so let's discuss a little bit more about this result. Why, for the case when C is zero, this following parameter is infinite. Uh, Sorry? No, 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 we are thinking just about the seconds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can do it, you can check it using duality. Yeah, but, uh, for, or you can check it also from the other, from the other uh, side. Yeah, so look, if you have a cycle, and you do not uh, assign number to the face, so, how you can distinguish the label, uh, the, the fate of the uh, bounded face and unbounded face? It's not possible because the weight of the uh, bounded face is the sum of the vertex labels if present, edge, edge labels if present. But it is the same for the external one. Yeah. So it's not possible to do it. If we label faces, so what we will do? We will assign here number one, here number two, and it doesn't matter what we will give here because this will contribute uh, the same to both values. Okay. Uh, now let me introduce the results for uh, wheels. So what is a wheel graph? We have a cycle on n vertices. So say we have a cycle on six vertices and we add one additional vertex and connect this additional vertex to every other vertex on the cycle. So this is what we call wheels. Yeah, so we have results for wheels. Uh, here you can see what, what is true. Okay, so if you are interested, then we can discuss it. Okay. And uh, of course, what was not proved or covered by the previous cases, yeah, not everything here is uh, proved, but uh, there is open, or there was uh, open, uh, like a space to prove the exact value for wheels or for cases 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 1. 
So we know only that it is either three or four. But I think that it's already solved. Uh, it's solved by Akito Oshima from Japan, but um, I think that we, we already proved it. So I should change it. Okay. Uh, we have also results for uh, for uh, Cartesian product of uh, of pass and uh, pass on n vertices and uh, pass on two vertices on this, this letter. Yeah, we have results, and that's all from my side for today. <laughs> I was here, so now. Thank you. <laughs> So I think we would like to have uh, we would like to start a uh, coffee break, uh, or we can discuss the local anthropic number to prove or show the labeling for concrete graphs to obtain local anthropic number. Okay, so I'm going to then what will be the smooth end of the local one? So, uh, for anthropic labeling, and the match then what will be the smooth end of the local one? What do you understand? Oh, I don't know what I got. Maybe you will I don't know. I am not sorry. I'm not very precise person. Why do they have a in the book? What's the line? You do it because it's beautiful and you like it. You know, it's like a challenge. Some, you can find some, um, some papers where you can get some publication. But I really don't know whether they are really useful or they are good in practical way. Is, is there uh, are there any uh, right to matter are any of your class or that we can extend values that can serve to simplification complexity? To what? Simplification complexity. Graphs in the graphs in the space, not linear graph. Uh, of course, we can study also on embeddings on some other surfaces. In general, the concept will be the same, yes. So you will just have uh, more faces. But in general, why not? Yes. Yes, of course. You can you can end it in a tall room. There is no reason. I don't know. Maybe yes. Maybe some of you you know, because some people here are, are dealing with that area. This is very good. And this was how old is it? Uh, 2018. So, if that's also, thank you again.